Thanks very much, Delbert. Uh, our next panelist is um, Frank Pokiak. Frank was born in Banks Island and currently resides in Kaktoyaktuk, where he has spent most of his life. Um, since the signing of the uh, Nuvialuit final agreement, the IFA, Frank has made wildlife management a, a priority in his life, and he's involved with his local hunters and trappers committee, both as the director and as president since the early 1980s. He's been a member of the Inuvialuit Game, uh, Game Collective, and he's also uh, advised the Wildlife Management Advisory Councils and appropriate governments on all issues related to wildlife management and harvesting. Frank has been a member of ver at various times on co-management boards established pursuant to the IFA, such as the Environmental Impact Steering Committee and the Wildlife Management Advisory Council, of which he is currently vice chair. Frank has rep represented um, Nuvialuit and at times all Inuit people at many regional, national, and international gatherings on wildlife. And over the years, he has worked hard to ensure that Aboriginal harvesting rights are protected in new legislation. Um, Frank has hold, held other positions, including commissioner of the uh, Nuvialuit and Nupiat Joint Commission for the South Beaufort Sea Bear Population. And um, also, he is a, a member to the, uh, to the proposed uh, steering committee for the Beaufort Regional Environmental Assessment. Frank is an acknowledged TK holder and is an experienced harvester of many species. He has managed to find a balance between his commitment to, the, to wildlife management and still pursue and practice his traditional harvest activities and to pass those experiences and skills and knowledge on to his children. Frank. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd just like to thank the organizers for uh, giving me a chance to speak today. Uh, I think this is a really important uh, topic that we're discussing because uh, like Delford said that, you know, we live in the north and uh, what better people to have in this uh, building than people from the north to actually uh, talk about uh, northern issues. And uh, like, like, like uh, James said, my name is Frank Pokak, and I'm the chair for the Inuvialuit Game Council, or, or IGC. Uh, the Inuvialuit Game Council represents the collective Inuvialuit interest as it pertains in wildlife matters, matters as mandated under the Inuvialuit Final Agreement, which was settled in 1984. Uh, I don't know how we work this. Oh, this is just a pointer. <clears throat> anyway, what I was trying to show you, oh, there it is. Uh, this is a map of the Inuvialuit Settlement Region. Uh, for those of you that are not familiar with the Inuvialuit Settlement Region or the ISR, we have a couple of maps on the screen here. The map on the left shows where the Inuvialuit re uh, Settlement Region is situated in, in relation to the rest of North America. The ISR is in the western part of Canada, Canadian Arctic, and it straddles two territories. The Yukon, as you can see there, where, where we, uh, part of our claim is uh, in the Yukon, and the nor uh, Northwest Territories. As it, you know, from in this area, this is a traditional harvesting areas for the Inuvialuit. <clears throat> the map on the right is a close-up of the ISR. There are six communities in the Inuvialuit settlement region. I live in a community called Tuktuyaktuk. You can see right there. There's Tuk, there's Sax Harbor, Ulukaktuk, Homan Island. They, they changed their name to an Inuvialuit name, Ulukaktuk, and Paulatuk, Inuvik, and Aklavik. <clears throat> Living in the Arctic, you know, heat, heat, heating is always a major issue. Many families are going back, in our, especially in our uh, northern communities, they're going back to burning wood because uh, the cost of fuel is so high that uh, most of the homeowners that live in, 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 in the uh, Inuvialuit Settlement region are going back to driftwood. They, they do that by either collecting 
trees from where, they, where we have trees or the community of Duke Duyukdo have a lot of driftwood that come down every year down the Mackenzie River and that's what we burn for, uh, for heating source. And like I said, this is due to the cost of heating fuel in a community. This is very expensive to heat your house. Uh, this is uh, my grandson. Oh, sorry. <laughs> anyway, this is some chopping wood for his uh, mother. I thought I'd share that. Sorry about that. Uh, he's a great kid. I've, I've, taught, I've taught him to do things since he was a very small kid. He's very dear to my heart. Sorry about that. I apologize. Anyway, you know, he's been harvesting uh, small game since he was four years old. And uh, I, I'm trying to teach him all the things that I was taught when I was growing up. Uh, and hopefully one day he'll be up here uh, presenting the Inevaluate. Anyway, I'm very, I apologize for getting so emotional. But anyway, uh, energy resources is a very important uh, thing to us in the north. And as you know, uh, there's a lot of potential for oil and gas offshore as I speak. There's a proposal from Imperial Oil to uh, actually do work offshore. And uh, uh, we want to make sure it's done in a proper way. So we do a lot, they do a lot of consultations to the communities uh, to make sure that it's done in a proper manner. And we are not against development. We are working with development to make sure it's done properly, and uh, uh, it'll protect uh, our rights for harvesting, you know, make sure that that's always there for us. And one of the reasons I do this work is because of uh, my grandchildren and my uh, children. They all like to harvest. I've been taking them harvesting since they were small. Like I said, uh, we teach them everything they, 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 you know, that we do when we were being, when we were growing up. And our community start recognizing uh, people that are harvesting our young youth. Like we have, we have some youths in our community that are 12 years old or even a little older than that that start harvesting. Some of them harvest polar bears and caribou. Uh, and they hunt all these pieces, so we're, we're teaching them while they're young. So like I said, uh, there's a lot of activity uh, potential activity, like I say, uh, that's, that's happening, and uh, uh, we would like to make sure that it's done properly. I, I'd like to speak a little bit about the marine coastal inland regions are utilized through the year by wildlife that the Valley depend on. You know, if it, uh, I always say that uh, the oceans are the very most important thing to the Inuvialuit in our region because uh, we depend on oceans for our beluga whales, our fish, and a lot of the waterfowl uh, that live out there. And if it wasn't for the oceans, I don't think I'd be here speaking to you today. And we also have land species that we depend on. Like we, we depend on polar bears, we depend on grizzlies, muskox, moose, and caribou and uh, all different types of fish we fish for. Maybe the next slide I'm, I'm going to show is a little clip. This is my grandson. He's actually learning how to uh, butcher a whale that we got this summer. So uh, uh, hopefully, like I say, he'll, be, he'll continue to do this all his life. You know, I know that he may, he may choose, choose to live in different areas what, what our people are doing now, 
Like we're losing a lot of younger people that, that's moving south because we don't have anything in the north for them. So they head south to uh, do different, uh, you know, to uh, better themselves. And with uh, potential oil and gas happening in our region, maybe that'll bring them back into our community. And that's what we're hoping would happen. Like I said, we're not against development, but we want to make sure that it's done properly. And uh, we've, been, we've, we've been dealing with oil and gas since the 60s, late 60s in our region. You know, there was a boom and bust in our region of Tuk uh, where there was all kinds of jobs that we had for our people, and I was part of it. And it was pretty heartening when uh, the companies moved out. I was, I was one of the fortunate people that could go back to the land and start harvesting. That, like, that's what I was taught to do so. Uh, but there was a lot of people that weren't fortunate to do that. Like they, they you know, like uh, Delbert said, it was a real hardship when uh, the companies moved out of the region. You know, so I think uh, I sympathize with the young people that are looking for jobs now because it, it, it makes them a better person when they do have jobs. Uh, and it makes them a better harvester because they can afford to buy good equipment. And maybe with that, uh, a little bit maybe on, uh, you know, this uh, energy, the way we used to have energy, I guess, uh, maybe just on a brighter side before I end here. You know, when, we're, when I first got married, uh, my wife and I, we had this little shack, and uh, she'd get up to light the wood stove every morning. You know, it's 40 below outside and really cold in the house. And every morning she'd get up to light the stove. And, and uh, one time I got so fed up with watching her light the stove, to, you know, she's shivering trying to light it. So I got tired of watching her, so I turned around and faced the wall so I don't have to watch her. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> Anyway, with that, the best part, the best part, the best part I liked about that was after she lit the stove, she'd jump back into the bed and I'd be the one to try and heat her up. So, <laughs> anyway, with that, I'd just like to thank the organizers once again for having me here to present. And sorry about the emotional kickback I, I just had there, so I apologize. <laughs>